Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're back here in Forza Horizon 4 in the Volkswagen Type 3. This is a little build I threw on it messing around to see if this thing could be competitive in S1 class. And at least with the tuning and setup that's on it now, it's not really a very competitive car in S1. Not because it's not fast, but because it's extremely, extremely difficult to drive this thing all-wheel drive with let me double check. I want to say it's like 600 horsepower, flat six it's in it now. My game won't take forever to load today. That'd be just fantastic. It's been really laggy the last couple days. Oh, 800 horsepower. My bad. Yeah, with 800 horsepower, 2,000 pounds, all-wheel drive, this is just not a very easy car to drive, on the wheel especially. It's very snap oversteer prominent, we'll say that. And with it being all wheel drive and that kind of power, it's it's just a handful to manage. I'm sure with more tuning to it and a little more practice driving it, it can be a very, very fast car. It's like as you can see, its acceleration is just phenomenal. It's very quick. It's a fairly nimble car, but that's not the issue. The issue is that you'll be going around a corner, all of a sudden you get some weight transfer in the back, and then you're just out of control and can't recover it no matter how hard you try or how fast you counter steer. It just, it's not gonna happen. So my idea was for this thing so to do a video on it. Let's take it. Upgrade it as fast as we can possibly make it. Throw drag slicks on it, rally suspension. Possibly, I might stick with race suspension. We'll try rally first and do a little tuning that way. And see if I can turn it into a sleeper drag car. Because this is definitely one car most people would not suspect to be fast in any way, even in a straight line. So, since I already did upgrade it to the top of S1, we're not going to have a lot we need to really change around here. To get it to where I want it to be at, I believe the only upgrades I haven't done was I had to drop that to get it to the top of S1. I need turbo upgrades. Uh, one upgrade to our intercooler. And unless it's fuel system, that, as I was say, that should do it. We'll go over here, swap out some drag slicks for these race tires we had on it. We'll do full track with upgrades. I will throw the rally springs on for now just to give it a try with that. We'll do a little tuning to them, see what it, how it handles. That thing looks ridiculous that high up. So besides that, we do have the flat six, like I said. It's got the twin turbo ch or mod to it. We have widest tires we can run. Full drive train upgrades, it is all wheel drive. I'm gonna leave it that way for right now. All the engine upgrades, and I do need to do one more thing. No, I actually did. I thought I had a sport weight reduction on it, but I guess I don't. So I guess that's it. We'll take it out here. I'm not gonna touch the tune at first, we'll just see how well it can run down the drag strip. Uh, it looks like this thing's wanting to pull the front end off the ground, even all-wheel drive already. Oh yeah, that's quick. That is really quick. So before we make our run down the strip here, let's go over it visually. It looks like we definitely meet most of the sleeper criteria. Especially since we have a ridiculously high ride height, especially in the front end. Looks like the shocks in the back are blown out and it's just kind of sunk down in the rear. Got a ratty paint job that looks like it had rusted at some point and somebody rattle can paint it over top of it. So yeah, we definitely meet the sleeper look. 
Actually, I'm going to launch with the uh, controller so I can get a shot of it from the side, see if we are lifting the wheels. Oh yeah, that's definitely pulling the front end. This thing launches so violently, it's crazy, and I just really over-revved it there. So this is definitely a fairly quick car for being on a stock too, and I'm very, very happy with the way this thing is driving without even touching it yet. That's not even adjusting tire pressure down or anything. Actually gonna jump over here real quick. I'm gonna go in and do a couple of quick tweaks to the tune and I'll be back and we'll take this thing and do an actual drag race and see how well it performs. Alright guys, so I just finished doing some tuning to it and I just wanted to show you guys this performance menu before I hop back out and actually test it out. I was able to tune this thing from an over 3 seconds 0 to 60 down to a 1.965, which that is insanely fast 0 to 60. And we got a top speed of 246 miles an hour. This thing is actually kind of strange. It likes a lot more rear bias being all wheel drive. Like I ended up going up to 74% was the optimum number. And a lot of the normal tuning you would do to a drag car to get it to get the best acceleration possible is not really what you want to do on this. It ends up slowing it down, which is very odd. Oh yeah, that's much, much quicker. You can tell this is a drag tune now, though. It does not want to stop at all. So we're just going to jump in here, do a cult cars race, down the drag strip, see what I get matched up in. I don't even remember what all is even in the cult cars class, but should have some pretty interesting vehicles in here. See how this does? We'll jump to some of the other drag strips too and just have a little fun with this thing and see what it can do. That was a horrible launch. This thing is all over the place too. All right, we definitely needed to have another go with that. That was an absolute horrible run for me. Not too bad of a time, though. That was way, way better. Nowhere near as much wobble either, and then I messed up second or third. That's all right. It should be a fairly improved time there. It was a little faster. I mean, two tenths of a second in drag racing is really quite a bit, so that's a pretty good improvement. Give it one more run before we leave this strip. Much better run. There we go, almost down into the eighth. If I had a little better first to second shift, I probably could have got it down in the eighth. And if you guys like this design, I'll leave this up on screen here for just a second so you guys can see the guy's name that made it and you can go look for it yourself. I think it's pretty cool looking. It's different than a lot of the uh, old beat up rusted down paint jobs you see. This one looks like an old beat up rusted down car that somebody took the time to go get a rattle can or even a paint roller or something and at least cover up the rust on the car. So I think we all knew I was going to end up coming here eventually, but we're going to go ahead and do it for the second race of this video. We'll leave it on that window so you guys can see the steering wheel and get a little better view. I know in the actual like cockpit view without the wheel, it's a very restricted view, especially on camera I've noticed. If you guys have seen Hobbs and Shaw, um, Hobbs' brother has a shop and he builds a lot of cars that kind of remind me of the styling of this little Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. Just sleeper kind of rat rods. He does do have like a lot of really nice expensive customs in his shop you see in the movie. But the cars he builds for like himself personally are kind of this style. Oh boy, we're going across lanes. 
Well, that went very badly for us. Couldn't have seen that coming with the way the suspension on this thing is set up. It is not set up to take a turn at all. We might actually be able to make a recovery here. This thing is so quick on top end. Actually, I'm going to jump across here. That might have... Okay, that was actually a good move. But maybe <laughs> if I can keep it on the road. Come on, little Volkswagen. We got this. Come on. Oh, I was looking at my position. That almost ruined me. I almost went straight into that divider there for the overpass. Just barely managed to make a comeback. So this thing is just an absolute handful to drive. I'm going to go into the tuning really quick, and I'm going to do a little playing around here. And I'll be right back. I just want to see if I can't make this thing a little more crazy to drive. And when I come back, you'll see what I mean. Alright guys, so I'm back. I did finish tuning it a little bit and playing around with a couple things. And let me show you guys real quick what I was talking about, about making this thing even a little bit more undrivable and harder to control. As you can see, it's not a super extreme wheelie build. It is recoverable from... But, if you do launch a little too hard, it does just pull to one side and want to start doing, uh, like, donut wheelies. So I guess you could call this a usable wheelie, be or usable wheelie build. There we go, I can get my words out. It doesn't just pull this insane wheelie and start spinning around sort of like the Morris Traveler and some of the other cars will. It's a very, very usable tune for drag racing if you just want to show off a little bit at the beginning but still have something crazy fast. The um, AMC, the machine, is a lot like that too. Even though you can get it to pull the front end off the ground, it sets down and settles on its own pretty well, and it's just an insanely fast drag car. Just nice and showy, kind of has almost that Fast and the Furious Dom's Charger appeal to it. So now that we did that little bit of change here to our tune, let's jump in here one more time to the uh, highway drag race and see if we can put down some decent times even though we're going to be pulling the front end off the ground. I definitely think that uh, front bumper with those extra two little headlights was the right decision. Very very cool looking. That was actually a surprisingly good wheelie car launch. I thought for sure I was going to pitch over enough is this just a whole caravan of Jag XJSs? Uh, I just got... I'm being pushed still. I don't know what's happening. Oh, uh, it was another Jag. Let's restart that real quick. That was entertaining, though. I was not expecting that to happen. I was expecting just to get taken out by the barrier. Let's try a little more reasonable launch this time. Oh, no air time this time. That's alright. I want to try to actually get to the end here. Almost can't hear my own car over all these Jaguars, which I just met up close and personal there. Probably a good thing that he slowed down when he did. Save me from... Oh my gosh, what are they doing? Oh, he, he's gone. That Jag is absolutely gone. This is chaos, and we just, I've missed the checkpoint, too. Okay, let's retry this one more time, see if we can actually make it through this race. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if they all have just way too soft a suspension, what the deal might have been, but they all just started swerving everywhere, and there was nothing I could do about it at that point. Oh, that was such a good launch there. So, so good. Just enough wheelie. You can tell that you had the front end up, but still launched super hard. These Jags are just battering me around. I really got to get a lead on them here. They're surprisingly fast, too. 
Oh, they all went off there again. I don't know what their deal is, but they just cannot handle that little section of the highway at all. That was very odd seeing, though. Just an entire stream of jaguars turning into a wave with cascading across the entire road at me. It's really strange that all that was in here were those jaguars, too, because... Obviously the Volkswagen Type 3 can be in the same class. I'm pretty sure the Ghia should be easily upgradable, be about the same. But we literally were just in an entire lobby of Jaguar XJSs for some reason. Actually, let's watch the replay on that. I want to see that one. That's a pretty decent angle. You actually get a decent shot over there. I was on that Jags door just a little bit, but it wasn't really enough for him to be moved around or me. You can kind of see how they all started bonking around into each other there. You can really see how much this car is dipping down in the back and wanting to pull the front. That's a good shot. Thing is really moving through there. Alright, that's enough of that. I just wanted to get a good look at how that thing actually looked coming off the line with the front end off the ground. It's a pretty cool shot. I gotta say, it's a pretty cool shot. This is a fun little car for drag racing, for sure. Alright, so as you guys can see, we are here at the Falcon Speedway Drag Strip at the LEGO Expansion. Um, not a huge variety so much in the grid on this one I did make the custom event for it that's S1 anything goes so at least we do have more than just a bunch of Jag XJS's this time this is gonna be our last race here for the day guys Let's see if we can't get a good one out of this this is a very close race I can see on my map there's a couple dots real close by me Still ran away with that though. Not the best time though. I think this drag strip actually does run at an uphill angle though. Yeah, I believe going up to that end of the speedway is uphill, which would make the cars run slower. Because that definitely added a lot onto my time. I don't think it was just the wheelie tune either, because our launch actually isn't much slower. It still hooks really well and grabs really hard. Yeah, this is definitely going downhill the other way. I highly recommend you get this car. It's, as you've seen in the video, a lot of fun if you don't have it. It's extremely easy to get this to. It's not like the Gia where you have to get 50% completion for the season. It's literally one event to go out and get it. As far as preference, I think I like the Gia overall a little bit more. It seems like it's a little easier to drive car. Especially considering I did do a rally tune on it and it handled much better than my S1 all-wheel drive tune for this did in my opinion. But still a really cool car and definitely worth getting. Really fun car for drag racing as you saw in the video. Very, very entertaining. And it's also still really usable. A lot of wheelie cars, they're just not that usable in the end. They're just... It's too hard to drive and keep in a straight line to really get any kind of good time or speed out of the thing. This, on the other hand, you can tune it with all-wheel drive to get a nice wheelie, get a good-looking launch, but at the same time, it's still a really, really fast car. So guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Our whole bumper's in the ground. <laughs>